There are several methods to locate and identify tigers. The oldest and the most reliable one is tracking. We look at the tracks, the size of the heel, where the animal walks, how it walks. This information won't tell us the exact number of tigers, but it's good, useful data. This method is also the most time-consuming and labor-intensive. Another method is to use dogs. It also involves tracking and measuring, but other things need to be gathered. Excrements, various smells, anything that would bear a scent, not necessarily excrements, uh, urine, for example. Dogs are then able to tell how many tigers there are based on variations of smells. This method is more accurate than tracking alone. Nowadays, we have had a technological breakthrough. Now we have cameras that help us identify tigers and tell one tiger from another. Because each and every tiger's stripes are unique. After the photographs are compared and analyzed, a pretty accurate number can be obtained. Camera trapping is by far the most effective way of pinpointing the number of tigers in an area which is important to tiger conservation efforts. And placement of the camera traps is key. We got to put it where we have the best uh, possibility of actually getting a tiger on film. So if we're looking for a place to set a trap, like if you looked at a trail, you could usually pick the trees that are going to have the highest probability of having a scent mark on it. But we also want to put it in a, spot, a place where a tiger is going to pause. Although camera trapping is an efficient method of calculating tiger numbers in the wild, it can take a long time to get the results you want. On average, of every 2,000 photos taken, only two are of tigers. Uh, what's on the rest of it? A lot of deer, a lot of wind, 12,000 trap nights. We've gotten 17 different species. But people are the, the most that, kind of animal that we catch. And the next is deer. And the next is tigers. But we're still, we still don't catch them very often. 